Welcome back everybody to my channel. Uh, today we will be creating a simple REST API using the Go programming language. So what I've done here is I created a uh, just an empty folder on my desktop. Um, what we will want to do here is open it up. Currently it's empty. Um, what we should do first is create some directories. So let's make a CMD directory and a package directory. So now we have these two. Um, and let's open up our, our project. I wanna move out of it and I wanna open up with Visual Studio Code. So here we go. By the way, if you guys don't have that set up in, in VS Code, all you have to do is uh, press F1 and then look up shell command and then install sh code command in path. So you can just hit code and then the name of the directory or file inside your terminal to automatically open up VS Code every time. Uh, so yeah, this is what we have so far, it's still empty. Let's go into the CMD directory and touch a main.go file and open that up. And as you guys remember, uh, we always want to declare a package first whenever creating a new, a new go file. Also, every project needs a main function. So this is where we'll declare it. I also have this Go extension installed and enabled on VS Code, which is uh, fantastic. It's great for just kind of auto importing some of the stuff and checking syntax and whatnot. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's just do a simple print statement for now again. Starting server, let's say that, sure, because we're going to eventually do a server. And let's just make sure everything's running all right. Right now we're in CMD. I want to do go run CMD main.go starting server. Cool. All right. So this is kind of the basic setup for a lot of Go applications that you'll see online. Um, it's recommended to have a package directory inside of your your main application along with the CMD directory so you can have different configurations for whenever you start up and run your application uh, but anyway let's go ahead and let's do this easy first the easy way first so the first thing we want to do is declare a router um, and what we're going to use is this package here called Kai or Chi, Go Chi, Go Kai. I don't know how to pronounce that. But if you search uh, Kai Mux on Google, Kai Mux Golang should be the first one. And it'll take you directly to the repository where. It's pretty well documented, it has a bunch of examples on how to set it up. This is how you install it to your go path. And what your go path is, is basically a, a place that holds all of your um, outside third party um, packages that you can use. So yeah, you run this in your terminal anywhere. And if you want to look into this documentation, it's pretty, it's pretty helpful and you can do a lot of interesting stuff with it. So this is the main idea. You declare a router, some sort of router that's a that's a, 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 a chi.new router instance, and then you can manipulate that variable based off of um, a few different things within this package. 
So let's go ahead and do that. We will declare a router and it's going to be of type chi or chi dot new router. And up oh, says we have an issue already. Router declared but not used up. Oh, see, that's a so for those of you who don't know, if you declare something in Go and you try to compile or anything, it won't actually compile when you try to run it because uh, it just won't let you. So if you declare something, you don't use it, you need to remove it or comment it out uh, because it won't let you compile. So here, let's do um, let's do a simple git path. Let's do router dot git and here we will declare a path let's call it api slash git example and if we look into this this git here it takes in a string and an http handler function for those of you who are familiar with um, restful services and and APIs and whatnot. A handler is basically kind of like a constructor. So let me let me show you what I mean. Um, for now, let's declare this random function called uh, git handler. Now, what this git handler the you gotta you always have to remember to pass in these two parameters with any any handler really um, a writer http dot response writer which is basically you know it I, it'll explain itself in a second and the second one is this is usually what people do they do r for http sorry r for http dot request so what this basically means is is this w is what you're what you're going to be sending back to the client this r this request this http request here is what the client is sending to you so in our case, since we're just doing a simple git request here, um, we're just going to want to send a response back to let the client know that, hey, you hit, the, you hit our endpoint. So the way that we do this is we, must, we first have to do json dot, uh, we have to declare a, a new encoder. So what what this means is we are encoding uh, this writer object, this response writer object, into JSON. And we do w dot encode. Let's just do a simple u got me and then we'll take this handler function and pass it in through here and now so what we just did here is we declared this this controller essentially where every time somebody hits this this path in our uh, in our application they'll get this response back so whenever you're you're going to write back to the user to the client just remember to use this new json dot new encoder and encode it with whatever object in our case it's a string to send back to them so we're not done yet we're, we're almost there um, the last thing we need to do is do a log dot fatal and do an HTTP dot listen and serve with the port number, which in our case will be 8080. 
and some sort of handler, which is the router, which is what we will be using the router. So that should be it. Um, let's also do a, let's print something out here. Also clean up a little bit more. And do something like server is listening on port 8080. Something like that, you know, just to give feedback to our users or to yourself when you run this. So let's run, go run CMD, may not go. Starting server, allow incoming network requests. And it should be running. Uh, I should have actually put this before that but um yeah so let's let's just go ahead and, and test out the endpoint let's go to a new window and go to localhost 8080 slash api slash git example i think is what we called it and there it is you got me so our our API was able to run and give us back data. And it's easy as that. And this is kind of the, the setup that most people use. Um, the only difference is that you'll see people break things up into different modules inside of this package directory where they'll have a uh, they'll have something like a handler um, folder filled with a, uh, a bunch of their handlers for different endpoints and you can mount these um, you can mount multiple different router endpoints to this chi router if you wanted let's go ahead and, and do a uh, a post request too just for the heck of it it's basically the same thing it's super simple um, we'll just call it that for now and it's saying that it doesn't exist so we'll just copy and paste that and change this to you just sent me a post rec and I'll go ahead and move this up too for now. And remember, every time you make a change, unfortunately, it's not like Node.js where you can have, um, I forget what it's called. I think it's Nodemon where every time you save it, it refreshes the, the server. Um, there's nothing like that that I know of yet for Go. Actually, I'm sure there there is. I, I'm still getting familiar with Go myself. Um, but yeah, just remember you need to you need to stop the the server from running by hitting Control C first before you can rerun this and see your changes. So let's go ahead and run that again. allow now this is localhost 8080 API get example let's make sure that still works it does now let's go ahead and hit our post endpoint see it didn't it didn't work because we just made a, a get request to this endpoint and this endpoint it can't it it doesn't handle any any get requests it only handles post requests so we'll have to open up postman to test this properly wait a second while this opens up if you guys haven't used postman before I would highly recommend it 
it's a great tool for um, testing out your endpoints. So I should, um, let's go to localhost API, oh shoot, localhost colon 8080 slash API slash post and send a empty post request and we should get our response back and there it is you just sent me a post rec and let, let me show you that our um, original handler is working too the path you got me so yeah this is this is how you run a server in Golang and set up a router with a handler and the idea is this will this will be your controller and eventually you'll want to add some sort of business logic like a service of some sort where service will add or an instance of a service and inside that service it'll do things like you know add user to database or something like that or any any sort of logic that you can think of that you know the actual functionality when you think of a what a backend does it'll go within in, in within the service or some sort of other module this we just want to keep clean and have just our response and our request so whenever we can that's all we want to have in here and then our our service instance which calls some sort of function inside of our service to do whatever we need it to do according to whatever endpoint you want it but that will be a video for another another date um, but that is the main idea you can mess around with this. Also, don't forget about the documentation for the Chi or Kai um, package on GitHub. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. But yeah, that's, that's it really. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, this has been my second video so far so <laughs> yeah i'll catch you guys on the next one